Hello crafty friends, welcome to this 10 ways with twine card making video. As the name suggests, today we're going to be using twine or string in 10 different ways to create 10 different cards. This is the entirety of my string twine collection. When I decided to do this video, <laughs> all I had in my collection was this. So I've been gathering bits and bobs. I reached out to a seller on Etsy and asked if they had any offcuts I could buy. And they very kindly sent me for free lots of little bits that they had left over. That's Paper Crate on Etsy. My son gave me this wool that he had left over from a project that he never finished. Oh, that was mine as well. I had some white embroidery thread that I used for making traveller's notebooks. And then I found these butchers slash bakers twines at my local charity shop. So they were only a few pennies each. So this is what I'm going to work with today. Obviously, you just use what you already have or what is readily accessible to you. For technique number one, I'm going to do some stitching. So I've got a firm block of foam here that I can poke into. I've got a paper piercer, a needle with three strands of embroidery thread on. So the embroidery thread that I have is six strands thick. I've just separated that out. So I've got three strands on a needle and I'm going to put a T-square ruler here and I'm going to pierce roughly every five millimetres, half a centimetre. And I'm going to try and get that as straight as possible. Not looking for perfection. There we go. So we've got a line of holes roughly straight down the side of my card panel. Now I'm going to take my needle and stitch as I would if I was doing fabric. So I've put a little knot in the end and I'm going to secure that with some washi tape. And the knot will just give an extra little bit of resistance so it doesn't get pulled out from underneath the washing. And I'm going to sew all the way down, then all the way back up again. I use a very fine needle for this because I don't want to make the holes any bigger than they are. So there we go. I've sewed all the way down and all the way back up again. So I've got a nice solid row of stitches, roughly in a straight line. And that just adds a really nice little bit of subtle texture to a card panel. You could, if you wanted, draw a heart, say you could take a die or a die cut, draw around it very lightly in pencil, pierce your holes and then stitch a heart. So you can pretty much stitch whatever you like. You just need something to poke holes with and something to poke into. On the back, I'm going to secure this in the same way that I did at the beginning. Please excuse the state of my hands at the moment. The seasons are changing, which means my skin dries out and I get eczema. So uh, they're a bit dry and cracked at the moment. What I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate all 10 techniques and then off camera I'll make some cards and show you the finished articles at the end. So do stick around to the end to see all the techniques on finished cards. For technique number two, we're going to use string as string. So anything that you use string on, such as bunting, such as a balloon, a gift tag, a parcel, a present, you can recreate on the front of a card. So I've got this blue and white baker's twine. I'm going to adhere this to the back here and I want that to come down about there. I might actually move that up a bit. Just going to mark that with a pencil so I know what I'm aiming for. And I'm going to take a matte gel medium in a fine tip glue bottle and run a very thin line. I'm not touching the ruler, I'm just using it as a visual guide. Then I'm going to lay my bunting into the glue, snip that off, fold that round and secure it with washi. And that should dry and stay. So it's secured on the back, but it should stay still when the glue is dried on the front. And I can do that a few more times to create a few rows of bunting.
So for this last row, I'm doing it slightly differently. I'm putting the glue down, putting the string on, and then I'll flip it over and secure the two ends. So you can do it whatever way you fancy. And now you could die cut some paper or even fabric banners, some triangles or little flags, and hang them from your bunting. So you can use your string as string. On to technique number three, and that is to use some twine or string or thread even as scrunched up texture behind your focal point. So I've got a card panel, a tag die cut and some thin baker's twine. And I'll just loosely wrap it round my fingers like that. And then you could lay it down in a kind of scrunched up manner and then maybe with some foam tape apply your die cut over the top so you've got a bit of interesting texture there i think this works best with thinner twine something like this would work but it would definitely be a chunkier look you could use twine or embroidery thread that is the same colour as your cardstock, so use white on this one, and that would just give you a bit of subtle texture behind your focal point. And this is some very fine thread, so it's not really string or twine. It's gold thread, really pretty pale champagne gold. And again, you can scrunch it, spread it out a bit, put your focal point on top with some foam tape that will hold it in place and then you can trim off the ends so that it looks how you want it to look you could tuck bits under that you don't want sticking out or just trim them off <laughs> she says oh, being all haphazard so that's number three scrunch up or wind up some thread floss twine string behind your focal point hold it in place with your focal point for some lovely texture subtle or otherwise technique number four involves winding twine or string into a circle so i've got a bit of scrap card here put some double sided on it and i'm going to die cut a circle before i do anything else i want to find the center of the circle I use my grid on my mat to work this out. It doesn't have to be perfect, but as central as possible. And I'm gonna use my pokey tool to poke a hole in the middle. Then I'm gonna take the release paper off and push the end through the hole. It doesn't have to be a graceful job. It's all gonna get covered up. But you want the string to go through nicely. And then I'm going to hold that in place like that and wind the string around, stick it down to the double sided as I go. I'd love to know how you use twine, string and thread on your cards. If you'd like to, do share in the comments. Let's keep going until you get to the very edge of the circle. You can take that out and press it down really well. And then snip off the tail and you could always trim off any little bits of paper that are showing still. And I would recommend getting something like matte gel medium which dries matte so not glossy. And you can always add a little bit of glue over the top to hold things in place so it looks a bit of a mess now but once that glue is dried it'll all look wonderful just don't be too rough with it let the string maintain its natural ness maybe just get a bit of deli paper non-stick paper and press it down 
and then leave it to dry and then you could use that for all sorts of things you could make flowers out of it lollipops out of it this reminds me a bit of a peppermint swell the kind of sweets you get at christmas you could just use them as abstract patterns you obviously don't need to use baker's twine you do get a nice swirly effect though with that one but you could use a solid color but yeah you can just create circles and then use your imagination to turn them into something else technique number five is to wrap twine around shapes so i've got a rectangle here this is actually going to be a cake it's a tier of a cake i've covered one side of this card rectangle with sticky double-sided sticky tape the back has got the overhang but i am going to add a bit of washing and then i'm going to wind this around neatly lining up each row of twine i'm just going to cover the whole thing i think something like this is best done with thinner twine I think I might go about halfway down and then bring in some yellow. Don't pull the twine too taut, otherwise you'll bow the card. But you could die cut out all sorts of shapes. A balloon would look quite fun. You could create a circular frame and wrap this around the frame. Now I'm going to bring in some yellow. As if it was a layer of icing between two pinky sponges. Now all the little ends can be adhered with washi. So everything stays put you could even add some glue on the back just to make sure everything stays where you want it there's a little bit of card peeking out there but that's okay we can snip that off without snipping the string and there you have a rustic looking string cake you could pop it on the front of a card on a cake stand with some candles coming out the top but as I said, you don't just have to do rectangles, you could experiment with any shape. Technique number six is to wind your string into a circle to create a wreath without using any card to support it. So I'm going to draw a circle on here. Just using a pot of texture paste to draw around, roughly circular. Now I'm going to add high tack PVA glue to my circle and I'm using this because it is high tack it's very tacky and it will hold whatever you put in it in place it does dry with a glossy smear though so you might want to be careful not to smear it where you don't want it and then I'm going to place my green and white twine into that like so you could leave it like that, just one layer, or you could go around again. And it'll give you another layer. It doesn't have to be the same circle. It could be slightly smaller, could overlap. Snip it off. And where the join is, the raggedy ends, you can always put some kind of adornment up there, especially if you're making it into... A wreath and press that down flatten it out a bit so I could put some baubles on this or some pine cones die cut pine cones turn it into a Christmas winter wreath you could do different colors at different times of the year another thing you can do which is slightly messier is you can put the glue on your string like that and take something like a tub and wrap it round going to mop up the excess glue make sure they're touching and then you can push it down carefully 
if you're careful, you can just slide it off and leave it until the glue has dried. And then you can stick that straight on your card. That might be quite fun with a thinner string as well. So you could just squish your string into your glue, thoroughly coat it. This will dry clear, so it'll be absolutely fine. Squeeze off the excess. This is a far, far muckier way of doing it. Leave it like that to dry. And it won't be completely rock solid once it's dry. You'll be able to manipulate it a little bit. So we'll just pop those up there. And I'm going to do that again. I'm going to coat my string in glue. I tack PVA. And with my sticky string, I can kind of create line drawings <laughs> to some degree. So I'm going to do some looping de loops up my card panel. So you can tamp, carefully tamp down your string with tweezers or some other tool so that enough of it comes into contact with your card blank or your card panel to stick the shape how you want it. You could get a little bit of glue on a spatula and say pop a little bit underneath like that and then press it down. So any bits that you think aren't going to stick particularly well, just sneak in a little bit more glue and then press it down. And then you can either snip off the ends or you can tie them off behind. So that's technique number seven, create a line drawing with your string. So technique number eight is just be a little bit haphazard and add some texture and line and colour and pattern to your panel by winding your string around it. Just tape it at either end. You can add some glue, you can add some double-sided tape, add some tape runner underneath. But once that's stuck down to a card panel, that's not gonna go anywhere. And then again, you can adorn that. As well as winding tape around your panel, you can use it to edge things. So I've just got a strip of Snowflake and Star embossed paper here. And I'm going to, where should we put it? Let's put it there. I'll snip off the overhang. And then I'm going to run some glue down the edge of my embossed panel. And take two strips of this dark blue thin twine, blue and white baker's twine, and press it up against the edge of the panel. The glue will eventually dry and hold it in place and I can hold the ends in place with washi. As well as winding string around your panel in a haphazard way or using it to edge a panel on a panel, you could be again a little bit more regimented and regular in your winding. So I put a piece of double sided tape at a diagonal there and now I've got some fairly thick fairly hairy string and I'm going to start it off on the back and then wind it around my panel sticking it down to the double sided as I go and get it lined up butted up against that bottom piece of string because what I want to do is almost use it like ribbon and washi tape and create a, a solid band of stringy texture across my card front. So that's four bits of string thick. I'll get that all butted up and pressed down. You can mix and match different strings. You could use the same string, the same string colour for all of your bits. I'll just pop a little bit more tape on the back to hold things down. Again, the trick with this, I think, is not to pull your string too tight just tight enough to get everything lined up nicely but not too tight 
that it warps or bends the card. So that's two rows. And now for a third colour. So even though I've got quite a strong double-sided adhesive underneath the string, I can still move the string a little bit, get it all packed in nicely together. And on the back, it's fairly well stuck. I could put a bit of glue over that to get it to just bind together and make sure the ends don't come loose or a bit of tape. But you could just add a focal point there and a sentiment and you'd be done. You could also mix in a bit of ribbon with this, so maybe you could have a bit of ribbon there or a bit of washi tape there. The world's your oyster, really. Technique number nine is, I guess, a form of stitching. So all I've done is taken a ruler and a pencil and drawn a grid of lines, so fairly random, arty-farty lines. And then I've taken my paper piercer and pierced a hole at the end of each line. You could pierce more holes in the lines if you wanted to. I'm just going to do that for now. Now I'm going to rub out my pencil lines because I don't want them showing. So I flipped over my panel and I've put double sided sticky over most of it. And this will give me something to stick the ends of my threads to. You could do that before you poke your holes doesn't really matter and now I'm going to take some string and I might have to make my holes a bit bigger depending on how thick my string is if you've got a nice needle that will work with your string then use that I'm just going to poke that through press it down against the string and then take it to the other end trim off that excess I think what might help is to use my a different pokey tool with a slightly bigger end. And then again, secure the end. I've made a bit of a mess of the paper there, but if I'm gentle and careful, I can delicately push it back into place. So I'm going to make all my holes a little bit bigger and then thread that and come back to you. So there's my grid all finished. What you could do with something like this is stitch over and under. So this at the moment is going over all the vertical strings, but you could go over, under, over. As I said earlier, you could put more holes in so you're actually stitching them rather than making one big stitch. You could do something more regular, create a plaid design. You could maybe even put a noughts and crosses grid on here and stitch in some noughts and crosses. The back of this looks like a right old mess, but you'll hide that when you stick it on your card. And if you use some foam tape, you can put it so that this doesn't create lumps and bumps in your card panel. So that's technique number nine, create a grid or a plaid pattern. Right, we're on to technique number 10 now, and that is plaiting and braiding. So I've got three different color pieces of string. You don't have to use three different colors. You could use all the same color if you like. I think it works best when your strings, your three strings, are similar thickness to one another. So I've tied a knot in the end and I'm going to anchor that down to my gloves mat with washi. And this just makes it easier to do the braiding, I find. And it's just plaiting, which I'm sure you all know how to do. Got to the end and I'm just going to put a knot here just to hold it where it is. So I've got my plait or braid, whichever name that you're used to calling it, and I can stick that on a card panel. And I think I will use some glue for this. I'll use my matte gel medium, could use tacky glue, whatever you want really. And put a generous application in a line down my card. Then lay that on there. I like that. Put something heavy on it to hold it in place. Doesn't matter if the matte gel medium spurts out the side because it'll be virtually invisible by the time it's dry. And I will leave that like that to dry. 
and then I can fold that around there, snip off the knots, tape it down to the back and I've got a lovely braid on my card front. Right, I'm back and I have made cards with all my backgrounds. So this is for technique number one, stitching. I added four more rows of stitching. Then I added a vellum doily with a white leafy die cut on top and then a Sincerest Thanks stamp and cut sentiment. And finally, I put some Morning Dew Nouveau Drops around and about. These look like glass when they dry. They dry clear and shiny and glossy. So we've just got a black and white card there and I really love the texture you get with this. I did do another stitching card as an example. I stitched in white again a number seven and then I cut the number seven out by hand with scissors, mounted it on a bit of black card, cut that out with scissors and then I used a background from my box of backgrounds and bits, mounted that on black and stuck it on with a stamped and cut sentiment. So you've got a seventh birthday card. So stitching is actually quite a fun way of putting words or numbers on your cards. This wouldn't be, I don't think, considered a clean and simple card because there's not much white space, but it's definitely simple, especially if you've got a box of backgrounds and bits that you can just pull from when you want something. Technique number two was use string a string. So I used the string to create some bunting string I went into my box of backgrounds and bits again and die cut out some little flags and I've added those on in complementary colours. So we've got a brownie orange, peachy orange and a blue. And then I added a let's celebrate sentiment. I did do another bunting one because in my dies I found these flag dies that have two little holes in the tops and I used the holes to thread the string through. So I threaded them on, stuck the string down and then stuck the bunting down as well so it didn't shift. But you could obviously leave the bunting unstuck and it could flap around and slide about. But again, I added a let's celebrate and I slightly curved the stamp to follow as best I could the curve of the string. I mentioned that you could possibly use a string a string on balloons so I die cut out a circle added a little knot and then knotted my string round and I've glued the string down with matte gel medium and added a happy birthday another example of using string a string I just tied a little bow and glued it to the top of this wooden star which I added onto the front of the card with a Merry Christmas. Another string a string example. I die cut out a square to make a present and then wrapped my string round, popped it on some foam and stuck it down. Then I tied a little knot in the same string and glued that down with a bit of matte gel medium, added a sentiment. So now I've got a stringed present. And finally, I used my string as, I suppose it could be washing line or a wire, or it just could be an abstract line. And I put a little die cut and coloured robin sitting on the wire with a Merry Christmas. Really clean, really simple. Technique number three was to scrunch some string behind your focal point for some texture and colour. So I took this pink and beige or cream baker's twine, scrunched it up, stuck a tag on top, which I've also put some string through. This is the white embroidery thread. So the tag has got some string, so that's using string as string. And I stuck that down with some foam and that's holding the string in place. I did put a bit of glue here and here so that I could artistically keep the string where I wanted it. I added a gold glitter cardstock branch and used Morning Dew 
crystal drops, Nouveau drops, to add some berries, glossy lumps on the end of my circular twiggy bits. And then I brought in some pink mini enamel dots to add a bit of movement and energy. And the pink is quite similar to the pink in the string. And that became a wedding card. Technique number four was to wind string into a circle. So I made this peppermint swirl type string. I then found some old packaging and wrapped this up as if it was a sweet. So I wrapped it round, taped it down, gathered this by twisting it, and then I wrapped some gold thread, some fine gold thread at either end to keep it closed, and then stuck it down. I added a sweet sentiment in gold and some gold foil card circles. Word of warning though, if you're going to put something on your card that looks like it might be a sweet or edible, then definitely don't give it to children or vulnerable adults. Technique number five was to wrap some string around a shape. So I wrapped this string around a rectangle to make a cake. I then die cut out a cake stand and rubbed gilding wax over it to give it a bit of shimmer and shine. I did the same with some small candle dies and I added a happy birthday here. So now we've got a bit of a vintagey, rustic looking string cake. I also die cut out a circular frame. So it's just the frame. And then I wrapped green and white baker's twine around the frame stuck it to a card, added some die cut holly and berries and stamped in the middle, may the peace of Christmas be with you all year long. So this is very simple. There's no shimmer of shine on that, but that could definitely be added. So that's another way of winding string around a shape. And that brings me nicely on to technique number six, which was to wind your string into a wreath. So I didn't wrap this round a shape. This is the one that I glued in a circle down to my card. I added the same sentiment in the middle, a couple of gold bells with some more holly, and then I put some festive berries, distress oxide, on a bit of card, used this die to die cut out lots of different size circles, I added them on as if they were maybe baubles, and then I put some Nouveau Crystal Glaze on top to give them a bit of gloss and some subtle dimension. Number seven was to use your string to create line drawings. So I glued my string down to my card. I die cut some butterflies out of some Victorian velvet coloured paper, which I then gilded with gilding wax. And I put my butterflies on the string as if this is a kind of flight trail. I added some gold nouveau drops to the bodies of the butterflies, some gold nouveau drops to evoke more movement and flow and a get well soon there. Technique number eight was to wind string around the panel. So this is the haphazard one that I did. I simply added a stitched rectangle die cut there in the same cardstock as the card front. And I put it over the bit where it dips. So these lines are kind of leading your eye towards a focal point, which is also shimmery and shiny because it's got this gold die cut on. I might add some of the crystal glaze to the white bits to give them a bit of dimension. But then I added a To My Best Friend stamped and die cut sentiment. This is the one where I glued the string along the edge of this embossed panel and I brought in the scrunching string technique, technique number two, and scrunched some gold thread behind a smushed die cut star that I then put on top with some foam to hold the thread in place. So there's two techniques there and I added a Merry Christmas here. This one I wound three bits of hairy string around the card at diagonal. I then added a die cut circle in white, the same kind of card as the panel, 
a gold cardstock leafy branchy thing and a happy birthday that follows that same diagonal. You could add maybe some gold foiled circles, could add some glossy accents to give it dimension. I think that's nice and clean and simple. For technique number nine, which was to stitch a grid, I decided to redo it because I wasn't overly enamoured with the colour scheme that I'd put together. So I decided to stick with the yellow and white baker's twine, stitch a grid, and then simply put a white die cut over it. I glued that down, popped a bit of foam under the leaves here and there to support it, added this gold halo and some yellow, pale yellow, small enamel dots. And I rather like that now. And finally, technique number 10, braiding or plaiting. I've got my red, white and blue with a slight gold thread glimmer in it, glued down to the left hand side of my card. I popped the panel up on craft foam so that the lumpy bit at the back didn't affect the card by making it undulate. I then added a white die cut wonky heart but before I stuck it down I wrapped gold thread around it so I wrapped not covering the whole thing but just a kind of again haphazard wrapping stuck down another smushed purple heart on top of that and a lots of love stamped and cut sentiment again you could add a little bit more bling if you wanted some nouveau drops enamel dots homemade or otherwise or some splatters but that is very clean very simple And that's these cards done and this video done. 10 ways to use twine on your clean and simple cards. I hope you found it helpful. Let me know which techniques that you use or would like to try. And if you want to see more from me, do subscribe, ring the notification bell, and I'll see you back here very soon for my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.